So we were just talking about uh, the black body, right? And things that are opaque and dense, we can get this heat, we can measure its temperature, but not everything is perfectly opaque, right? Gases are not opaque. So how does that work? Well, this is something that was worked out in the early 19th century that um, here we have the picture we've seen before of our spectrograph, so a light a prism and a slit. And if you have an incandescent light bulb, you get a spectrum which is continuous, that so covers all the wavelengths. That's right, we see all those colours, just like we saw in that previous plot where we did see lots of colours and therefore it's temperature. And that's because you're looking at a solid thing, a tungsten filament, which has lots of chances for the matter and radiation to interact because it's opaque. Yep. But if you now have a fluorescent light, there's no tungsten filament in there, it's just gas with electricity being passed through it. So we're really only looking at electricity going through one thing, for instance. It's a transparent gas. Yeah. And now the spectrum looks quite different. Yeah, it's, we see the colours, but it's clearly broken up. We don't see the whole continuum spectrum, and we can clearly see distinct bands. Yep. So, for example, if you take some hydrogen gas and you heat it up or zap it or some, put electricity through it or something, this is the spectrum you'll get. Um, you'll see there's a, uh, a spike here. That's called an emission line. So because it's e above or being emitted as light. And there's nothing in between. So you're only getting wavelength at this wave, light at this wavelength and that wavelength and nothing at this wavelength or that wavelength or that wavelength. So you would essentially, you would see different colours but just very narrow specific colours. Yep. And so, um, for example, if you generally heat up hydrogen, you often see this in nebulae. They look very red because this particular spike is in the wavelength the human eye perceives as red, and this is by far the strongest spike. Yeah, because it's clearly more than the one in the bluer and the even more yeah. blue colours. So this is quite different. It's not like emission at all the wavelengths I could get from a black one. It's only particular wavelengths, nothing in between. So, cause if, so let's just say if I was just looking at this wavelength, I wouldn't actually see it. Just black. as if I'm looking at the infrared, yeah. I wouldn't see these colours. That's right. And... So it's very weird, it's quite different. Yeah. Um, if you have different elements though, it gets very different. Here, for example, I've taken a, a bit of gas of copper and argon and heated it up. Okay, so we have two gases being mixed together and heated up. Yes, and now look at it. Once again, you're getting these spikes at particular wavelengths. It's, so now you're it's a little bit busier though than our hydrogen prompt. <laughs> and in fact, both of us recognize this because we use this to calibrate our spectrometers. So it's got, these things are called emission lines, these spikes, and they're all over the place. And there's a lot of them, which means it's very easy to calibrate. Now, this is also, we should just note, a very small color, right? This yeah. is only, you know, in the very extreme kind of blue end of the spectrum. Yeah, we're only looking at a narrow range of blue colours here. If and you had the whole spectrum, there'd be a lot more. So you would still see lots of colours, but there's just lots of these individual little bands of almost different strengths. And this is something you may remember doing from your chemistry at school. Um, look at nebulae in space, and they also have these things. Here's a planetary nebula, and again, you get spikes at particular wavelengths and nothing in between. This is a spectrum I happen to have lying around on my hard drive. So is it that some of these different colours are actually because of the different gases present in this nebula? And for example, the blue is usually due to a particular uh, oxygen line and mm -hmm. the red is due to hydrogen typically. Because what you find out, like when you do your chemistry at school, is that different elements, when you heat them up, give different colours. So it's, it's kind of like fireworks, right? Yeah. When they explode, they give different colours in the sky. And it's the same thing. So for example, this is copper, it gives a greeny blue colour and sodium gives an orangey yellow colour, same as sodium streetlights in fact. Yes. And what you can find out is that for every element there are particular wavelengths they emit at. So we could actually then look for the specific, not the black body spectrum, but the specific colours of light, identify which exact colours are there and then kind of match which elements or gases are present in the thing we're looking at. Yeah. For example you can see copper has these lines down at blue and green wavelengths, which is why it looks blue-green. Argon, argon is quite busy, it has colours all over the place. The sodium, by far the strongest, is actually there are two very close together lines there, um, and that's what makes sodium street lights very yellow, because even though it emits these other colours, most of that light or energy is in this yellow Whereas color. hydrogen, this is a strong one, so just hydrogen gas clouds tend to look red and so on. And so you can use this to actually now work out what things are made out of, and this is why flame tests work. You can look at the colours of different fireworks, because the fireworks again have these different metals in them which get heated up and emit these particular wavelengths, and that gives you the colours in fireworks. So the more we break up the colours of light, the more we can identify the specific colour emission features and therefore identify what is present. So this is starting to look really useful. So these are called emission lines. Okay. Emission because it's being emitted, emitted. shines, um, and lines because they're only at particular wavelengths. 
So, um, so instead, if we were to call them emission black body because a black body is saying it's emitting yeah. at lots of different colors. You could call them emission spike because if you've got a spectrum, it looks like a spike or it a does. very yeah. narrow mountain or a tree trunk or something like that. Okay, but we're really talking about because there are lines of specific wavelength colors. Yes. Um, so the wavelength depends on which elements are present. Yep. So there'll be different wavelengths for hydrogen, for neon, for carbon, for copper, and so on. Um, and they come from gases, but only if the gas has been excited in some way, for example, heated up or have a shock wave go through it. I mean, the gas in the room between you and me is not shining. You have to say, because I mean, there's obviously air, there's obviously gases in here, but we don't see these bright colored streaks happening in front of us. But if we took that gas and we passed it through a current through it or heated up to a few thousand degrees, then it would indeed start shining and show oxygen and nitrogen lines, well, Or like a neon lamp, right? We take neon yes. gas and put electrical current through it, and all of a sudden we get our bright, colorful signs. That's right. Um, and the strength of the different lines, and there are particular wavelengths that are ca like a fingerprint. So if you see a wavelength at uh, 656.3 six nanometers, we all know that's a hydrogen line. Right. We've spent far too much of our lives studying that particular one. Yep. Um, but also, they're not always going to be the same. For example, they'll always have the same lines for a particular element, but maybe one will be stronger or one weaker, depending on how hot it is. Okay, or how hot it is, or how much gas is potentially present, right? Well, yep. depend on how much. The wavelength will always be the same, but yep. the amount of for example, one hydrogen line as opposed to another one will depend on how it's being zapped, how hot it is, and so on. And also, if there's multiple gases present, we'll see a mixture sometimes of those fingerprints or those lines. That's right.